Okay, so we'll get started here. And what I've done is, uh, this is two and a half, no, uh, two and a half grams plus a half gram of hardener. So it's three grams of West Systems uh, 105 resin with the 205 fast hardener because I kind of want this to set up in about an hour. Uh, because this part is so small and curvy, I expect that the, the glass isn't going to be too terribly happy about the idea of um, settling down and sticking properly. So um, I'll be babysitting this for the next couple hours and, uh, and, I, and I want it to just be done uh, and not give me too much trouble. So I need to replace the battery in the camera. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, we're back. So a little acid brush and all I'll do is just um, kind of wet out the, the surface of the foam a little bit. This will fill a little bit of the uh, of the air pockets in the foam. Um, not that that's important. Ultimately, this will leave a pretty rough inside edge, uh, inside surface on the inside of this hook. That will all have to be sanded out and and finished, of course. So with that wetted, I've got bunch of little pieces of three-quarter ounce cloth here and, and I'm using three-quarter because uh, it conforms pretty easily to uh, compound curves so there may not be a great deal of rhyme or reason to how I put all these on um, but I want to get at least a few layers everywhere of three-quarter ounce cloth completely um, you know throughout on the entire surface here so apparently a lot of uh, what I had recorded was out of out of the picture uh, out of out of the screen so what I'm doing here is I'm laying on a few layers of three-quarter ounce cloth and uh, because because it's very smooth uh, and it conforms really well to compound curves so I can lay it in in you know semi some basically random uh, overlapping layers and and make sure that I'm getting good coverage uh, multiple times uh, throughout this assembly um, I don't really care how thick the real one was uh, my intention is not to make this a scale thickness my intention is to make this strong enough to survive the rigors of this hobby and uh, I mean obviously this hook is never going to be snatching a line on a carrier deck however just goofing around in the shop moving from place to place uh, it may relax and, and come down while uh, bouncing around in the back of a trailer and um, hit things, snag things, you know how it is, hanger rash. So uh, 
it has to be strong enough to survive uh, because I, I don't ever want to have to make another one. I, I just, I hate doing maintenance. And um, so my goal for most of these little scale detail kind of things is um, just, it, my goals are pretty simple. Um, all I really need for them to do is uh, is be as light as possible and only strong enough um, to last forever. That's it. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't ask for much, really. Is that too much to ask? Be very light. Look like you're real. And last forever. There. Three goals. That's all I ask. So, because this part exists, well, just, just about as far aft as you can get on this airplane, I want it to be as light as I can possibly make it. And what that means is that um, like I said I've mixed up a total of three grams of uh, of laminating resin here and which is not very much obviously and All the glass that I've got here is probably going to add up to uh, a couple of grams at the most. So once I once I remove all of the foam, which also doesn't really weigh anything, this part will probably end up weighing somewhere in the neighborhood of. I'm going to guess four or five grams. We'll find out tomorrow, I guess. So, uh, I've got a couple more layers of uh, three quarter ounce cloth, and then uh, I'll bring you back in a minute. All right, so right now I'm laying on a couple of layers of, uh, uh, I don't know what, I think it's 5.6 ounce cloth. It's it's like e glass in that um, the weave makes it conform pretty well to these kind of compound curves. It's about the heaviest glass I th thought I might be successful at using. Uh, for this purpose so uh, but even so I'm fighting with it a little bit Turns out I need smaller pieces than I thought I did. So, you know, thumbnail size pieces. <clears throat> Shape of the pieces really doesn't matter too much. Just got to get them on there and Play with them with the brush until they get wetted out.
It's a bit of a messy process, obviously. In case you're wondering what I'm using here, I've got a, a magnifying glass that I'm looking down through. It might create a bit of a glare for you. Sorry about that, but my eyes aren't well, my eyes aren't very good at all. And this helps me see what I'm doing. So I have what I think is a minimum of three layers of three quarter ounce cloth everywhere. So I think I've got total coverage with three layers of quarter, uh, three quarter ounce cloth. And, you know, that means that some, some areas might have, <laughs> you know, five, there might be five layers thick. I don't know. And I want to get at least two layers everywhere of this five ounce cloth. I think there's already plenty of resin in place. Uh, I just got to get it all to lay down and have the dry layers of glass, the new layers of glass, soak up the existing resin. You really don't want to have any more resin than necessary. Um, because you don't want the layers of glass to float apart from one another and resin in and of itself is not really it, it's not the thing that brings strength to a part it's the composites it's the weave of the glass or the carbon that that brings the strength to the part. And the purpose of the resin is to just kind of provide a, a medium that holds those, those composite weaves together. You know, and together, man, they make they make ridiculously strong parts. Obviously, we all know that. Um, my point is that I don't want to just keep adding more and more resin, just in order to make it easier to wet out the new layers of cloth, because essentially I've got a minimum at this point of five layers of cloth on here, and uh, which takes which took a goodly amount of resin initially but that resin's already there um, and so just a matter of pressing pressing down and working with the the weave of each new additional layer to get it to soak up some of that excess resin if this part was to be bagged which is a ridiculous concept but if it was to be vacuum bagged then um, First of all, it would make a lighter component, a uh, tighter component, and because all the excess resin would be, would be squeezed out and soaked up by something like a peel ply or a blotter layer or something like that. But if somebody wanted to try and vacuum bag this component, all I got to say to them is, <laughs> good luck. All right, so this is uh, some carbon chop. And you may have noticed in the picture, which is not convenient for me to get to right now, um, but the back side of the actual hook has a lip 
And so I'm just going to throw a little bit of carbon chop right here on the back side of the lip. This is the very lowest part of the, um, hang on. This is the very lowest part of, of the hook. And so what I want to do is get a little bit of carbon chop in there and uh, kind of swish it around and get a little bit of resin in there and hopefully it will bond in a reasonably good fashion because this is a this is a sharp point this is the point that actually scrapes on the ground and grabs the wire when you land on on the carrier and so it's a reasonably sharp point you want it to get under the wire you don't want it to bounce over the wire you don't want it to be so dull that it just smacks the wire and, and carries over the top um, so because it's a sharp point I'm not going to be able to get the glass to roll around it so when we look at the the side view here you know we're talking about this point right here is a relatively sharp point comparatively speaking and I'm not going to be able to get all this glass these excess glass layers to make that sharp turn so I'm just laying some carbon chop in here and um, hopefully I'll be able to massage it and wet it out and get it to make a fillet if you will a fillet that extends from that excess glass on the front um, over onto the back side doesn't have to be neat which is good because it isn't <laughs> and there's no chance in hell it will ever be neat um, but I want it to be something that uh, with a little bit of sanding tomorrow once all this is hard then and, and I remove the foam this should be relatively easy to sand and I'll have uh, a nice lip here when it's all said and done. Just got to make sure it's all wetted out well. Okay. Move all that up to the edge. Now you can see on the the other side. This is the the side that you know you see the most of. Want to make sure that that's still tacked down well. It's sitting and the the glue has gotten pretty tacky at this point. Um, West Systems with the fast hardener uh, doesn't have a great deal of working time. Um, and but I like it for jobs like this where uh, it's a small job and I want it to tack up quickly because uh, the part itself is going to be such a major pain in the ass um, to try and get the glass to lay down and stay in place it's going to want to keep popping up got a decent fillet on the back. I think I've got reasonable adhesion all the way around on the front and I think that's about it.
All right, so I'll bring you back tomorrow morning when this is hard. We start trimming it out, getting rid of all the foam. So, good night.